Welcome to Standing Grace with Alan McQuarrie, a ministry of Thousand Islands Baptist Church in Brockville, Ontario. I'm your host, Alex Philippi. We all know life is hard, but Jesus is here for you. He wants to encourage you through his word and remind you that you can always stand in his grace. Did anyone ever teach you how to pray? I know no one taught me. It was just something that you were expected to do, and yet no one ever taught you how to pray. And yet the Word of God tells us that Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. Well, that's what we need to look at is, how do we pray? Here we are, and we're going through all the struggles of COVID, and we're going through all the troubles of finances and health and everything else that is constantly attacking us. And we do need the Lord to help us and to intervene into our lives. We need to learn that there is a correct way to pray. The Lord taught that to his disciples in Luke 11. So in this podcast, what I want to do is just go over very quickly, what does your everyday prayer look like? In other words, how should we be praying when we're at home or when we're at work or when we're driving in the car or just when we just feel anxious and we need the Lord to help us? Even in a short prayer, how should we be praying? So let's look at this passage in Luke 11. Now, it starts with what seems to be the Lord's prayer being repeated. In Matthew chapter 6 on the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord taught a very formal presentation of the entire method of how to pray. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and all of that. And that is all of the elements of prayer. Three years later, the disciples were with the Lord Jesus and they saw him praying and they were amazed at the effectiveness of his prayers. And they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray like that. And then the Lord explains what he is looking for and what his heavenly father is looking for in an ordinary everyday prayer. I call it the blue collar kind of prayer, the kind of prayers that we have as we live our lives. Not the big formal prayers, but just the wake up in the morning, go to bed at night, through the day as you're driving, the kind of prayers that really motivate the hand of God to move in our lives. So there is an actual blueprint for how to pray. And the Lord tells us that in Luke chapter 11, where he does continually remind us that we are to be praying to God the Father, who is a holy God. And we're asking not for our will to be done, but his kingdom come. In other words, it's not going to Santa Claus and saying, here's my shopping list, give me everything on it. Rather, we are going to the Lord and saying, I want your kingdom, your perfect will to be manifested. Even though I'm asking for this, help me to appreciate whatever you give me. He goes on very quickly and says, give us our daily bread. In other words, it tells us that we are to be praying for what we need today. Every day, wake up and think about what your day is and ask God to bless you and guide you and provide for you and protect you in that day. And then tomorrow, you'll do the same. That's give us this day our daily bread. And certainly we are to forgive those who have offended us. That's, again, part of our daily prayer life, that we are constantly praying that God would enable us and give us the grace that we need to forgive those people who yesterday offended us and hurt us. And so we do need to ask God to forgive us because we, uh, in the eyes of a holy God, are just as guilty. So please, if there are people who have hurt you, you need to ask God to give you the grace to forgive them. And sometimes it's very hard, and but you have to ask God, Lord, you forgave me for all the things I continually do against you. Help me. Give me the grace I need to truly forgive those who have hurt me. But that's not the end of the prayer. The Lord continues as he describes what our daily prayer life should look like by giving us a parable, actually two parables. 
The first is called the parable of the friend at midnight, and the second is the parable of the father and the son. And in between those two parables, sandwiched in between, the Lord reminds us of his effectiveness of what he will do. But again, he's answering the one single comment, Lord, teach us to pray. And so the Lord is giving them this blueprint, this model of what God the Father is looking for from his disciples back then, but also for us today as to how we approach him through the week, as to how we approach him in our daily walk. And so the first parable is this. Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say, friend, let me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer him from within, do not bother me. My door is shut and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he's a friend, yet because of his imprudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. Now, what does that mean? Well, it'd be like having some friends show up unexpectedly at your house. And then you realize, I don't have any food to provide for them. So what I do, I contact you. I would call you up and say, I need some help. And you say, look, it's the middle of the night. What are you calling me for? And I say, I need some bacon. I need some eggs. I need some milk. And you're like, no, it's the middle of the night. And you hang up on me and I call you back and say, I really need some eggs and milk and some cereal. And you're like, no, and you hang up. And I call again, and then I call again. And you keep hanging up on me, and I call again, and I call again. And finally, you say, look, if you don't stop, you know, you're in trouble. But I can't stop. I need help. So I call again and again. And finally, you say, look, come and get whatever you need then and stop bothering me. Well, that parable is not meant to say that the Lord is ever bothered by us praying and requesting things from him. But the Lord Jesus, when he was trying to indicate how to pray, he's saying we need to have that attitude of persistence. We don't interpret this parable in the negative sense as if somehow we're bothering God, but rather in the positive sense in the way we approach God, that we continually approach him with enthusiasm and persistence, because we know he is going to answer. And so when the disciples said to the Lord Jesus, Lord, how do we pray? He says, you have to pray consistently. You have to pray persistently. You have to pray continually over and over again. Now, we often would think, you know, well, I do. I prayed for something two or three times or four or five or ten times and nothing has happened, so I move on to something else. Or I pray for my friend for a day or two and then I again forget to do it or move on to something else. But what the Lord was teaching here is that we continue to pray until the Lord answers us. And that's the next part. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. The Lord is saying that when you seek, which is a continual action, that there will be an answer provided. The Lord will provide. At his time, in his way, he will provide. And he'll provide in a way that is better than you could ever imagine. The next part is a parable of the father and the son, which says, if the son asked for a fish, would you give him a serpent? Or if he asked for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? In other words, if your son, your child asks for something, you don't give him something that's going to hurt him or harm him, but rather you provide him as good as you can, as well as you can. And so the Lord says, we who are not holy do the best we can to provide for our children, but he who is holy provides perfect and so much better than we could provide ourselves physically. And so what Jesus is saying is the way we are to pray on a daily basis, the way God wants us to pray continually is to pray acknowledging him, acknowledging his holiness, acknowledging our dependence, acknowledging it's his will that we want, not ours, acknowledging that we need to be forgiven and we need to forgive others, 
But when we come to him with our prayer requests, we don't just mention it and move on to something else. We continually come to the Lord. How often? My daily bread. We come to the Lord day after day after day after day after week after week, knowing that the Lord will answer, but in a way that may be different than we expected. But his way will be so much better than could be imagined because he provides perfectly. He provides for his children the perfect answer, not just a temporal answer, but a glorious answer. And that is what the Apostle Paul realized in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 when he said he had a thorn in the flesh and he pleaded with the Lord three times. The Lord didn't take the thorn from the flesh away from him. He just said, my grace is sufficient for you. In other words, I'm not going to take away the problem. I'm not going to give you what you're requesting, but I'm going to give you something better. I'm going to give you the grace that you need to endure through it, and as a result, grow and mature to be more Christ-like. And Paul acknowledges that and said that his through his weaknesses, he is strong. And so truly, we have to understand, what is it that you are praying for today? What is it that is heavy upon your heart? Is it the salvation of a child? Is it your spouse who is not a believer? Is it your family members who are unbelievers and you've been praying for them for a long period of time? I say to you, do not give up. Be persistent. Continue to pray. That is what Jesus was expecting of us, that we are a people who pray persistently. We are a people who pray on a regular basis, waiting for the day in which the Lord will, and he will, answer in a way that best suits him. Are you praying for health issues? Are you praying for money to pay the bills and to get you out of debt? I understand all that. Pray persistently, and the Lord who is good and gracious will provide. He has promised he will provide, and certainly he will. And so do not give up. If you haven't prayed today, if it has been a while since you've actually spent time with the Lord, then you need to today return to him. Return to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me for the fact that it has been a long time since I have prayed. And there are things that I have ceased to pray for, but I need to bring them back before you. I need to bring them once again before your throne and persistently pray because This is how Jesus taught his disciples. This is the norm of how the Christian prayer should be. God could provide instantly the first time we mention it to him, but that's not the expected. That is not the norm. What is expected is that we'll be a people who seek, who persistently request, who come to him daily. And so I want to encourage you, If you need someone to lock arms with you and pray with you, send us an email. Let us be a part of your life as you seek Christ and his goodness and blessings in your life. I'm Alan McCorry, and we will continue next week on this podcast, encouraging you to stand in his grace. Thank you for being with us today on Stand in Grace. I'm Alex Philippi, inviting you to join us for more teaching like this in person at Thousand Islands Baptist Church in Brockville, Ontario, and to join us online at standinggrace.com. Until next time.